So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today for our Hyperpigmentation Solutions webinar. I am Suzanne Lohr, the National Educator with Elika Organic Skin Care. Today we are going to look at melanin. What is melanin? Why do we have it? Where is it formed? What exactly is hyperpigmentation? What are different types of hyperpigmentation? What are some of the causes? Common treatments that you'll experience out um, in the world, and then of course they leak as organic treatment options. And then we'll of course discuss um, our guests at home care to maintain uh, proper skin care to address their hyperpigmentation and make sure that they're taking good care of themselves at home. So what is melanin? Melanin of course is a pigment that is derived from the amino acid tyrosine. It's responsible for determining skin color and hair color. It does provide some protection against sun damage to skin. Melanocytes, which are located in the basal layer of our epidermis, produce melanin. Production is increased in response to sun exposure. Now, there are a number of steps that are involved in the biosynthesis of melanin. First step is, is the catalyst of um, a chemical by tyrosinase, which is a protein enzyme. A lack of tyrosine, which is an amino acid component of tyrosinase, can lead to albinism. Tyrosine is only found in specialized cells, these melanocytes, which are tiny granules of melanin pigment that are contained in these vesicles called melanosomes. Melanosomes leave the melanocytes and move into other cells in the epidermis. Mostly brown or black in color, the melanin deposits will determine the skin pigment, which varies depending on the number and the distribution of the melanosomes. Aside from determining skin color, the light absorbent melanin also helps to protect the DNA of our skin against UV radiation. Melanin can be found in several areas of the human body, but including skin, of course, where it provides our skin color, hair, and in the pupils and irises of our eyes. It's traditionally believed that skin pigmentation is the most important photoprotective factor since melanin, besides functioning as a broadband UV absorbent, has antioxidant and radical scavenging properties. In 1975, Dr. Thomas Fitzpatrick of Harvard Medical School developed the Fitzpatrick Scale, which is a way for us to characterize different uh, ranges of the melanin that's in the skin. The skin types or the skin ranges from very fair to very dark. The amount of melanin in our skin results in the color or tone of our skin overall. The amount of melanin also determines our skin's susceptibility to burns and skin cancer risks. So as you'll see on the left of the scale, the Fitzpatrick skin type 1 is ivory, very fair, light to red hair generally, prone to freckles, they burn very easily, and they very rarely tan. This is the category of skin that is the greatest risk of developing skin cancer. This guest needs to absolutely protect their skin with sunscreens and nice clothing that's going to help uh, to keep them nice and covered. As you go further right, the skin will get a little bit darker, meaning they have more melanin in their skin. So the, the skin's natural sun protection is a little stronger the darker the skin tone gets. Our very dark brown, or our number six on the Fitzpatrick scale, that guest still needs to protect themselves when they're outdo outdoors in the sun. They are not immune to um, skin cancers and risks like that, but their risk is a little bit less than those of us that are on the lighter side. I personally am about a, a number two to a number three, um, so I need to make sure that I'm definitely protecting my skin very, very well when I'm out in the sun. <clears throat> So what is hyperpigmentation? Hyperpigmentation is when it's a very common condition in which patches of skin become darker in color than the surrounding skin. The darkening occurs when an excess of melanin forms or deposits in the skin. We know a lot of different types of hyperpigmentation. Mostly we're familiar with freckles and sunspots. Freckles are genetic, but sun exposure and other factors may darken them. As the person's skin uh, is less exposed to sun, maybe in the wintertime they're not spending as much time outside, the freckles can actually fade. The technical term for freckles is lentigines. Similar to freckles are moles, which are long-lasting and they don't fade. Changes in moles must be monitored closely to detect possible skin cancer. 
sunspots, which is one of the terms that we see here, um, also called liver spots and age spots. These are dark spots that are induced by sun exposure. We also call them photo damage. They're usually flat, discrete spots, usually on the cheeks, nose, and forehead. They're also very common on the backs of hands, the arms, and the decollete. These will not fade as sun exposure is limited. Medical term for these is solar lentigines. Other types of hyperpigmentation that we will see is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is a discoloration due to inflammation caused by trauma to the skin. Acne, cosmetic procedures, very deep chemical peels, maybe some overuse of certain ingredients, medical trauma, etc. Mostly these is, this condition is common in darker skin tones. They tend to hyperpigment um, a little more easily than the lighter skin tones. And another very common form of hyperpigmentation that we will run into is melasma. This is hormonally induced pigmentation. This occurs in about 70% of pregnant women, and you'll also hear it called cloasma or pregnancy mask. The coloration is due to changes in the estrogen and progesterone levels. It can be due to thyroid dysfunction, stress, etc. Most often it occurs in brown or, or olive skin tones. This is a very difficult type of hyperpigmentation to treat, and it does worsen with sun exposure. So this guest especially needs to make sure that they are uh, wearing their sunscreen and protecting their skin at all times. Now, as an esthetician hosting a webinar discussing pigmentation, it would be remiss of me to fail to mention monitoring moles for possible skin cancer. We're all familiar with the ABCD rules that are the best way to check for moles and make sure that they're not developing into cancer cells. The A is the asymmetry. If one half of the mole does not match the other half, if they're asymmetrical, probably need to have that checked out by a dermatologist. The B stands for border irregularity. The edges of the mole themselves are very irregular, often ragged looking, blurred, or even notched. The color. The color of the mole is not the same over the entirety of the mole. There may be differing shades of tan, brown, black, sometimes even patches of red, or blue or even white. If the mole has differing colors throughout one mole, time to see a dermatologist. Diameter is the D of the ABCD rules. You want to make sure that the mole is not too large. The mole, if it's larger than six millimeters or about a quarter of an inch, is growing or it's larger, that's when we need to see a dermatologist. Recently, I've even seen an E added to this chart, and it is to note evolving. If a spot starts small and is getting larger or darker or any other changes have been noted, that E is going to indicate that it's time to see a doctor. If any one of these ABCD rules points to an irregularity, it's time to visit a dermatologist. Now, common treatments for hyperpigmentation are really going to depend on what caused the pigmentation in the first place. If this is a result of scarring, is it a result from changing hormones? Has a current medication or a different medical condition caused the hyperpigmentation? Is this from too much sun? We've got to determine what the cause is in order to help us treat it properly because, for instance, if it's caused by hormones or a medical condition, the underlying cause of the hyperpigmentation must be treated first or any treatments that we do to diminish the pigmentation will be in vain. Anything that we do won't actually get rid of the hyperpigmentation until we resolve that underlying issue. Now, some common treatments that you'll see from a dermatologist, oftentimes they'll recommend a microdermabrasion or even a topical application of an alpha hydroxy acid or retinols, which will exfoliate and rejuvenate the skin. These will help to remove more quickly the darkened areas of the keratinized layer. Other topical treatments include lightening creams that remove excess melanin from skin. Some of these can be purchased over the counter, but others are even a prescription strength. And even more aggressive treatments include bleaching creams that also help to slow down the production of melanin, laser resurfacing, IPL, etc. While I do believe that a lot of these treatment options do have their place and they do work nicely, we at Alika Organic Skin Care prefer to take a more natural route to our skin care. So we have found in nature different solutions that will help to diminish the pigmentation of our skin without causing further damage. 
For our hyperpigmented guests, either from sun damage, any sort of dark spots, or just an uneven complexion, even a scarred skin type, darker skin tones, freckles, blotchy skin, we have products that are going to help to lighten that pigmentation, brighten the skin, and balance out the tone. Product lines that we have to address our hyperpigmented guests are our stone crop line, apple and lemon, our cucumber and parsley oxygenating treatment, and then we also like to use our yogurt power peel or our rose hip exfoliator, and our age defense bioflavonoid eye cream goes nicely with these products as well. We're going to go into more detail in a moment about these ingredients, specifically what is it in these ingredients that work so well with hyperpigmented skin. So we're going to talk in detail about stone crop, lemon, yogurt, bearberry, and parsley. Horseradish, nasturtium, woodbine leaf, and lemon balm are also included in a lot of these products, but they're not the most active ingredients. So we're really going to focus on our actives. The main purpose of this category is to lighten pigmentation, diminish that hyperpigmentation, while we're also balancing out the hydration level of the skin and helping to rejuvenate. Stone crop is a succulent plant. It helps to reduce pigmentation and lighten the complexion. It actually contains citric, isocitric, ascorbic, and L-malic acids. Ascorbic, citric, and isocitric acids are natural antioxidants that lighten dark spots. L-malic acid, which is an alpha-hydroxy acid, also helps to exfoliate that keratinized layer of the skin. Because the stone crop plant is a part of the aloe family, we oftentimes like to look to it to help heal and balance skin. If someone has a lot of sensitivity or they've just had um, a procedure done that makes their skin more sensitized, the stone crop mask and stone crop treatments may not be the best bet for them because of these acids. These acids may cause some tingling in the skin. Lemon, lemon is well known for its lightening effects. It is extremely acidic. It has a pH of a little less than two. It contains citric acid, which again is um, going to help to exfoliate the skin and reduce pigmentation. But lemon um, is also nice and regenerative for our skin. We'll have a, a really nice um, antiseptic type of, of feeling and cleanliness to that skin. Yogurt, which you'll see in our yogurt power peel, contains alpha hydroxy lactic acid for the exfoliation of keratinized surface cells. Yogurt helps to soften and tighten skin, and it also is antibacterial and antifungal. Bearberry, which I've heard pronounced bearberry and bearberry, depending on where you are in the country, contains a natural hydroquinone, which lightens the skin and helps to block melanin production. How this blocks the melanin production is it helps to inhibit the conversion of that tyranase, which is necessary to produce melanin. It works very deeply in our skin in that basal layer of our epidermis to uh, inhibit the production of melanin. Parsley is a vitamin C source, which I was told in beauty school the best way to remember vitamin C is that it lightens, brightens, and tightens. Parsley helps to moisturize our skin. It stimulates circulation for better absorption, and it also soothes redness. The vitamin C, again, is the ingredient in the parsley that is going to lighten and brighten the skin. <clears throat> and decacidalin oil phenylalanine is derived from castor seed. This is an organic compound that inhibits tyrosinase activity, which, is, as we remember, stimulates the melanin production. So we're inhibiting that, that activity so that the melanin production is uh, decreased. Now, what are the products that contain these ingredients? Stone crop, we have our stone crop toner, the fiber stone crop gel mask, our brightening serum, our stone crop whipped moisturizer, and our Alika for Men stone crop daily moisturizer. We also have the stone crop body lotion. And for those of you that do body treatments, we also have a healing stone crop body wrap. Lemon products are, of course, in our lemon cleansing gel. 
It's also in the nettle exfoliating wash. So the nettle exfoliating wash is the exfoliating cleanser that we like to use for our guests combating hyperpigmentation to just increase that effectiveness of the lemon. We offer a couple of different exfoliator options. We have the yogurt power peel, and we have our rose hip exfoliator, apple and lemon gel mask, brightening serum, again, has the lemon in it, and our apple and lemon whipped moisturizer. Yogurt is in our yogurt power peel. Bearberry is in our brightening serum. And parsley, of course, is in the cucumber and parsley oxygen treatment. The yogurt power peel is one um, that I really want to be sure that everybody is comfortable with using. It is one of my favorite peels, but it is the most intense of the peels that Alika offers. Yogurt power peel is a 20% lactic acid peel with a very acidic pH of around a 2. This is a really intense chemical peel. You will start to feel a tingle within just a couple of minutes of using this, and we generally recommend that the guest only leave this on for three to five minutes. The cucumber and parsley oxygen treatment is another treatment that is incredibly important to use um, for hyperpigmentation and for helping to heal the skin. I want to go into a little more detail about that one um, because I, I just want to make sure, again, that everyone is using that one properly. The cucumber and parsley treatment comes in, it is one product, but it is in two separate containers. We have the gel mask, and then there's a powder that goes with it. The powder activates the oxygenation in the gel mask when we want to do that oxygenating treatment. Ideally, we like to mix two parts of the gel to one part of powder, and once you begin to stir them, you'll notice a little bit of bubbling happening. That's that oxygenation. You want to apply it to the skin immediately, so don't pre-mix this. You can use it alone to increase or, or to increase the effects. Uh, cover it with the Hungarian paprika gel treatment. We want to leave it on for about 15 to 20 minutes, and your face will get nice and pink. That Hungarian paprika gel treatment will increase the absorption of the ingredients. It achieves deeper penetration, and it also helps to push that oxygen, direct it more down into the skin. The effects that you'll see from this cucumber and parsley oxygenating treatment, are, it's going to be very hydrating and refreshing. You will see lightening effects over time. It helps to strengthen the walls of vessels and soothe and nurture the skin. It's very regenerative and vitalizing and, of course, oxygenating. It is antiseptic, and it also stimulates blood and lymphatic circulation and cell metabolism. So there's a lot of wonderful benefits of this treatment. This is a treatment that is only for professional use. So this is a wonderful treatment to have your guests come in and do with you in a series and then do another skincare maintenance regimen at home. For lightening treatments, we definitely recommend a series. They can be 6 to 12 treatments, depending on how severe the pigmentation is. And the treatments can be given as frequently as three times a week. But you want to make sure that you're alternating that AHA paprika peel. Um, alternate that with the yogurt power peel. Your client should also continue the lightening process with at-home care products on a daily basis. You can use steam with the um, cucumber and parsley oxygen treatment. It's wonderful with steam. However, if you are doing the Hungarian paprika gel on top of it, don't use the steam. That makes it a little too intense. Now, this is an ingredient that I mentioned a little while ago, undecacidylinoyl phenylalanine. Again, this is derived from castor seed oil, and it inhibits our melanin stimulator, melanotropin, which controls the tyrosinase activity. In short, it helps to reduce or even halt the production of pigmentation. This is an ingredient that is just being introduced into our line this year. Um, it, we have a new brightening serum that will be coming out next month and a brightening moisturizer for face, hands, and body, which contains this amazing ingredient. These will be launched in September of 2016, and uh, we will be doing some great specials and promotions on that, so look for those coming up in email announcements. Now, I have a friend who has a great way of relating skin care 
and the results that we see from our skin care to someone who's wishing to go on a diet, somebody who's wanting to make major life changes. If you're trying to lose weight, eating one salad and having one workout isn't going to get you to your goal. You've got to make changes over time and eventually the weight will come off. The same is true when we're addressing our hyperpigmentation. One facial is not going to make the difference. A treatment series is a phenomenal step, but it is truly the at-home care where the real results will be seen. The entire regimen is formulated to work together for the best results. We'd love to send our guest home with our lemon cleansing milk, the nettle exfoliating wash, fiber stone crop, or apple and gel, I'm sorry, apple and lemon gel mask. I'd like for them to use that at home about one time a week. If your guest is hyperpigmented and their normal combination or even a little dry, your fiber stone crop gel mask is going to be the better bet. If they are oily or even have some acne issues with their hyperpigmentation, the apple and lemon gel mask is going to be better. It's more acidic and it's going to help to tighten those pores a little bit better. Brightening serum, it's essential that they use that two times per day at home. Stonecraft whipped moisturizer or apple and lemon whipped moisturizer are the moisturizer solutions for this guest. Again, the stone crop is ideal for our normal combination to even slightly dry and our apple and lemon is what we want to use for our oily or even someone with some acne issues um, that is combating hyperpigmentation. Now, of course, we need to protect the skin. Once we're doing all this nice lightening, we're getting uh, those melanocytes to stop producing as much melanin and we're, we're bleaching out what's on the top layer surface of the skin. We've got to protect that skin so that future sun damage doesn't occur and undo all of the hard work that we've put into the skin. So I recommend the Tomato Face and Body Moisturizer for Exposed Skin to go on top of your whipped moisturizer every single day. This is wonderful to give to your guest um, to put on their skin at the end of a facial treatment in the treatment room. But of course, having them do something like this at home is phenomenal because every day they're getting exposed to that, uh, to that sunshine. We've got to protect their skin the absolute best that we can. Now, depending on the professional treatment schedule that you have your client on, you may or may not want them to exfoliate at home. For instance, if they're seeing you for a weekly series for 6 or 12 weeks, they don't need to do that exfoliation at home because they're already getting that with you in the treatment room. But once you've got them on a maintenance schedule, whether it's monthly or every 6 or 8 weeks, you want to make sure that they're exfoliating at home. I recommend for them to take home the Rose Hip Exfoliator for them to use at home. It has 5% lactic acid in it, so it does have a little bit of that chemical. It also has the lemon balm oil, which is great for lightening that pigmentation. And it has the granules of corn germ so that you get a mechanical exfoliation with that as well. Only one time a week would be all that they would need to use that for, but that is uh, my recommendation for their at-home care. Well, thank you so much for paying attention today, and thank you for joining us for this Hyperpigmentation Solutions webinar. I hope this has been informative for you. Um, again, I will answer questions here momentarily, but thank you so much for partnering with us. Thank you for participating today, and remember, always live beautifully. <laughs>